my segment. I think they called it Crossfire. It's, uh, it's the second segment. And it's basically I was asked to write Gotham Central, do a Gotham Central ref take. Two cops like I had done in the comics, uh, 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 Alan, and it is actually Chris Allen, and um, uh, Montoya Analog, uh, a cop named a detective named Ramirez. And they have to do a prison transfer, and that's sort of the background for the story. But the story is about the changing face of Gotham and about how, you know, for Alan, he's not comfortable with this Batman, and he's not comfortable with Batman's familiarity with Gordon so well. Ramirez is very happy to finally be able to be a Gotham police officer and not be ashamed of it. Alan has serious reservations about this guy who apparently is on a first name basis with their boss uh, and goes around busting people up with impunity. And uh, you know, saying anything more about the segment gives the segment away, but they find themselves in a situation that leads to an encounter with Batman and sort of a change of view. Um, we tried to do it a little less cliche, or I tried to do it. I mean, what I wrote, I tried to make a little more organic. And one of the things I wanted was, uh, you know, I, like I said, I'd been specifically asked, I wanted that buddy cop aspect, not so much lethal weapon, but that sense that you would get in shows like Homicide of two people talking in the car and then and the interaction and the friendship. This is the first time I've written for animation, so in its own way, it's, it, it's, it's a lot like the first time I wrote Batman for comics. And you write the script, you turn it in, a couple weeks later, a month later, you get a comic book, and there are words you wrote and Batman saying them, and you sit there going, Holy crap, I wrote stuff Batman says. And this time it was, they're doing what I said they were doing. They're moving. Um, you know, it's weird because when you're writing comics, you're writing static motion. You, you never, there's no continuity. It's not film. You can only pick a moment. You don't say he's sitting down. You know, he's either in the chair or he's out of the chair. But the act of motion in a comic book is supplied by the reader. Um, so to transition into a, a medium where time is more rigid but continuity sort of from moment to moment is very fluid and is, and is present, that was pretty trippy. Um, you know, it's weird. I, 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 when I started doing comics, I learned very early that the, the comic book page I saw in my mind's eye was never going to be the comic book page that I got from the artist. And you deal with it, and most of the time, you let the professionals do their job, you know? So you try to pull back on your expectations. And the same thing here, you know? I, I went into this one going, I'm writing a script. I got no idea what they're gonna do with this. They may put them on, you know, space zeppelins around Venus, God forbid, but they may decide to do it. And if they do, you know, I, I'm gonna suck it up because that's, you know, my job was to write the story. So what I've seen, you know, I liked. Um, I think for, for my first animation outing, I'm quite happy with it. I'm not a fan of the mentally ill Batman because I believe in the heroism of the characters. I, and I think that's important. We tend to forget it. And I think, you know, the older we get and the, the more we watch our world around us sort of collapse and decay, we, we gravitate towards anti heroism when we, and we, we adopt a cynical worldview that we then justify in saying, oh, I'm just a realist. But at the heart of Batman is a hero, all right? Uh, no matter how dark, you know, the Nolans may make these movies, that core heroism remains. You have a guy who sees a problem and is willing to sacrifice everything that he is to, to fix it. Um, and sure, if you wanted, you could say, well, he's horribly scarred by the death of his parents and therefore not quite right. But we kind of, you know, you got, you got to take with a grain of salt the Batman aspect, and then you roll with it. And, you know, I, I, I've said this elsewhere. I think that the nobility of the character is the tragedy of the character. Um, that every night he is going to go out and do this. Every night he's going to go out and he's going to try to save another life. And every night he's going to fail. Because he can't be everywhere at once. He's going to be downtown, so he's going to be shoved off a roof uptown. 
It's going to happen. And he's not an idiot, and he's not crazy. He knows it's going to happen. Uh, but he'll go out there and he'll devote his life to trying to fix it anyway. And there's a nobility in, in that to me, and I think there's a heroism there, and, I, and, and those appeal to me. And there's also, I think, um, a lovely sense of pathos about it. And I, give me them characters with pathos. You know, This is why I'm not a huge Joker fan, but why I'm a huge Two-Face fan. Two-Face comes with his own, you know, here, big box of pathos for you, you know. Joker is meant to be a cipher. You're not really, and you, I don't think we ever really should know why he is the way he is or what he does, what he does. That's not his purpose. His purpose is to be, I'm madness. Deal with, I, I embody violence. I am the thing that killed your parents. I make no sense. I'm random. I don't care. And I'll keep doing it, you know. But you look at Two-Face and you go, this guy you know, was a good guy who gets so broken, he has to flip a coin to tell between right and wrong, or not even to tell, he knows. He's got, he's got to let chance decide if he's going to do good or evil. And you know, that's heartbreaking. Gotham Central was a, a book that uh, DC published for about five years, maybe? Um, that was specifically about a group of detectives in uh, the major crimes unit of the Gotham Police Department and the conceit there, there, there are a couple conceits you have to accept in the comics. In, in the movies they're well established and you're still early on in continuity so they're not a big pill to swallow. You know, in Batman Begins it's established the town's rotten top to bottom, the cops are rotten top to bottom. Um, in the comics it's harder to get away with that because Batman's been doing his job for a while um, and Gordon's commissioner of police. You would think the department would be somewhat cleaned up. Um, so the conceit of Central is that there's a squad of detectives. They are handpicked by Gordon. They are his good detectives. And they are responsible for the supervillain related crime, the, the freak related crime. So if Catwoman robs a place, they're the ones who catch that case. If the Joker goes on a rampage, they're the ones who catch the case. And that always puts them in the shadow of Batman because these are always the things that Batman is, is combating. So the book was written very strictly from the point of view of the detectives, not Batman. When Batman appeared, it was very rare, and it was always uh, presented as a subjective experience from their point of view. He appeared to them the way he should, the way he wanted to appear to everybody. Uh, it wasn't, you, you were never inside the Batcave in this book, let's put it that way. You were never inside the Batmobile. You would turn around, there he was, you would, you would think you were talking to somebody else, and you turn around and the guy you thought you were talking to was actually there, and there's a footprint on the windowsill, and a shadow, you know, leaping off in the distance, and you sit there going, you, Bleh. and that's, I mean, that's what the book was. The book was about this sort of love-hate relationship that the good cops in Gotham have with Batman. And, uh, uh, Ed Brubaker and I wrote it uh, for a long time together, and we would switch off in story arcs. And Michael Art, uh, Michael Lark, did the art for a very long time, and then Michael and Ed sort of moved on, and uh, a fellow named Kano came on and, and did the art, and I sort of did the writing full time for a while. And about two, three years ago, we ended the book just because um, characters had sort of reached the ends of their arcs. A couple of the detectives, one of whom is uh, one of the detectives that's used in in in, uh, in Gotham Knight. There's a guy named Crispus Allen who, who I had created actually for Detective Comics um, back in, God, I want to say about 2000, 2001. Um, and then his partner who in the, in the series Gotham Central is a detective named Rene Montoya uh, who has hence, since gone on to better and, and bigger things or shall we say bigger things, maybe not better. Um, in, in, in Crossfire that that partner is named, uh, I forget her first name, uh, but her last name is Ramirez. I forget the first name. The thing was, the script I turned in, it was Renee and Chris, and, uh, and then the rewrite. Uh, they, 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 I saw it, and I was like, well, they changed your name. They must have had a reason. So, I am actually told they have a very good reason. I'm not told what it is, but I'm told it is related to the film, which I have not yet seen. I'm, I'm told it is Dark Knight related. We'll see.